happy Saturday. Welcome to Black Sister Talk, where you can breathe. A community therapy platform breaking the stigma on mental health in ourselves, families, and communities one conversation at a time. With host LaWanda Chambers, licensed professional counselor, a.k.a. your therapist's favorite therapist, putting care back into you and the community. Black Sister Talk is an affiliate of the Black Reality Think Tank Radio Network and is broadcasted on the Blog Talk radio platform. Hey, happy Saturday, and thank you for joining us on Black Sister Talk. I am Miss Wanda, your therapist's favorite therapist, giving you yet another unfiltered, candid conversation. Today's conversation focuses on breast cancer awareness with our sisters who are survivors, caregivers, family, and friends. Let's breathe together and support one another while providing safety, assurance, and love. I want those who enter this space to be respectful and mindful of stories shared, choices made, and feelings. Everyone here has lived their lives filled with different perspectives. Let's understand what it takes to be you in the morning to understand what it takes others to be them. I hope that the persons who need to hear this are able to get to this and hear the voices of these women who have a voice which needs to be heard. I am blessed to have them share their stories, and I know someone somewhere needs to have this information and be awakened to speak up, get help, or be motivated to keep fighting. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. First of all, let's celebrate our sisters. Let's celebrate each other. Let's celebrate all black women. Let's celebrate the fact that today was Sister Strut and sisters was out here strutting for their awareness and their fight and their win and their soon-to-be wins in this battle that we call cancer. I am going to get right to it. I am going to open up these lines, and we are going to breathe, sisters. We are going to talk about it. I want to, I want to first of all, let everybody know just say hello, and I welcome you to this space. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Everybody able to hear? Hi, yes, I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. I can hear you too. I want to make sure I'm able to hear everyone. Um, and just know that if you don't want to speak, that's okay too. Um, I'm just happy that you're in this space with us. And so, um, First of all, let's just go by saying Breast Cancer Awareness Month is very good to have this month, but for those who are experiencing cancer, and especially breast cancer, this is a a battle every day. So let's not get that twisted, right? Um, But most importantly, I want to give this space to the women who who can educate me and others on what this journey has been. Um, For me as a black woman, hearing that breast cancer is the second leading cause of our death was just devastating. And so entering this space, I'm not trying to stick with all the statistics. I just want to kind of hear the story of the journey and what happened. How you were feeling? How you feeling now? What do you mean? That's that's what if I would like to. If people are not talking, they can mute mute themselves. I mean, too. What do you? Okay, wonderful. Can you guys hear me better now? Yes. Yes, awesome. definitely. Oh. Great, great. So, like I said, I'm just happy to have you in the space so that we can talk about it and you can share your story um, and your stories and and just enlighten us on what this journey has been like for you. Um, I know some of us have had conversations and some of us are friends. Some of us are friends of friends, but in this space, we're family. Um, because we're sisters and we represent and hold each other down. And if anything, I would like this platform to go ahead and push the agenda that we do got each other back um, all the time. So 
Miss Miss Brina, is it okay if if you share with us um, what your day has been like today? I know you were out with the sister scrub and you were um, sharing with me some of some of that experience. And so, if you would like to start with that and introduce who you are and tell us a little bit about um, what it's been for you. Um, sure. Um, my name is Sabrina Cooper. Um, I have, I don't have breast cancer. I have Hodgkin's lymphoma, but I went to the sister's drug today and I participated with my sorority and some more, some of my friends that came to support. Um, I also had several friends that lost relatives to breast cancer recently and I was down there to support them as well. Um, it was a struggle to, I thought I was going to be able to just breathe through the strut and um, not have any issues like I have done in previous years. But this year I was kind of slow, but I, I made it I made it to the finish line. I was the 30th person, the 31st person to cross the finish line today, and I was very proud. Um, it was it was a very nice turnout. We had, uh, it, there were um, uh, people that had breast cancer there, and there were survivors there and families of survivors, We and there were many teens there. So it was really a nice turnout this morning. Absolutely. That's a beautiful and very happy to have you share that experience because um, a lot of people don't have this information about breast cancer. It takes, it takes for us to start to learn more or get out and do more once we become affected by it. So it's, it's, it's just a great it's just right. so, Yeah, I learned. I learned I'm sorry. I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if I'm stepping on anybody. I I learned some one thing today, and I didn't that I didn't know. So if I learned one thing, I felt it was worthwhile. Like I didn't. I do. Maybe um, other people don't realize it either. Um, but did you know that you? Well, I didn't. I just found out today. That you're supposed to get your breast. Examine your breast every month. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like let me go to the doctor. But they said every month, and Fox Six wants to do it every six, the sixth of every month. So that's something that I didn't know, and and I'll I'll be keeping up with that. And now that you, especially with me, I'll definitely make that part of it too. And I'm glad you brought that up because wait a minute, how many of us knew to do that? been taught to do that or shown by our mothers or relatives how to uh, appropriately or effectively do breast examination, right? Does anybody have anything to share about that and what that experience had been like for them? Hi. I'm Kamantra. Hi. And, yes, um, I can invite on that. Um, physical exam every month. I am approaching my two-year survivorship cancer-free. I had stage two breast cancer in my right breast, and it metastasized and it spread into my lymph nodes. So I've been getting breast exams since I was about 31 since, you know, I lost a couple of people, a couple of survivors in, on my mom's side of the family. But they they did teach me that the first part of being aware is first you have to know your body. With you doing these exams routinely, you can kind of know that, okay, this lump is supposed to be there or that lump was there or, you know, but when when you don't, be aware, self-awareness of your own body. When you're aware of your body, then you know when these lumps start coming because these lumps are are undeniably, you know they are abnormal lumps. Those are not, the, the cancer lumps are not normal lumps. They come in and they feel like rocks. So they did teach me like uh, the six point um, examination to be able to examine your breast for abnormalities and things of that nature. 
Mm-hmm. And I, first of all, thank you, Kenosha, for sharing that. And just to segue also that knowing even if you're doing your monthly exams, is that an end-all, be-all? Is that the type of thing that if no news is good news or are there other things that women should be looking out for? Um, Not so much that no news is good news because you – Breast cancer comes in four different stages, and I like to say five because they use stage zero as a stage. And if you're going to use it as a stage, I think we need to go zero, one, two, three, you know. But stage zero, you still have, they find what's called a lump. That's the alarm, and that's what lets you know something is there. Um, My ups was caught at a stage one, and unfortunately mine was nearing stage three. But the signs were there. Um, there. I had many signs. And um, I, like you said, not not only be self-aware, but when you see these signs, don't ignore them. Go in. It's best to be safe than sorry. They're going to say, oh, well, breast cancer doesn't run in your family. We don't feel a need to do an exam because those uh Mammograms cost about four thousand dollars an exam, and mm-hmm. um, they're gonna they're yeah they're gonna try to tell you if you don't have good great insurance, they're gonna tell you there's really no need. Uh, if there's nothing they can fill with the hand, you're okay. And meanwhile, that- you will have this lump just growing and growing, and depending on how aggressive this cancer is going on. Uh, what mm-hmm. kind of cancer it is, if you're own positive, negative, they have all these different numbers, it can grow really fast. And you can go in in February and they can say, oh, you're just fine. And you can go back in August and be at a stage one that fast. Wow. That's why the self-exams are more critical and you being more aware of your own body. And like I said, the reason why I didn't think too much of mine is because I had a prior surgery to remove a lump that they had followed that was growing, but when they tested it, it was benign. So they told me, you will have scar tissue over some years. So I didn't listen to my self-conscious and take Mm -hmm. that serious. And even though I had scar tissue, I should have known that that was way more abnormal than scar tissue because it was no longer soft tissue. Mm, okay. When cancer on, drop- forms, it's hard. It's really hard. So it's kind of distinguishatory. That's true. That's that's so true. Yeah. Come on, come like on. there's no doubt. Hey. You can't you can't miss cancer. It's hard to miss it. In the early stages, you can, but that's why you have to be sub, sub, subconscious of your own body. You have to know what, okay, this lump in here, this little tissue been there, this been over here, like all of this is fine. This is normal to me, and, but, but the moment you feel something abnormal, you need to go right in. I sat on it for about eight months, y'all. Eight months, I sat on it. Because the denial was horrible, and I didn't want to believe, like, this is what I think this is. And it proved to be more, it almost took my life because I didn't want to go in. So, you just... Just, you just took me somewhere, Kenosha, and ladies, you, please do chime in if you have anything to say, if you agree or disagree, because this is a space where there may be agree, agreements and, hey, your experience may be different. So let's let's really get into this because, Kenosha, you brought up a really good point, you know, being in denial and, first of all, knowing your body, and then lastly, the subconscious piece and not being able to trust the self, and just not wanting to deal with what's happening. Um, 
a lot of emotions are occurring at that time. A lot of thoughts are happening. Um, this is a life-changing event, right? And to look at life and not that like, things are already happening, you know, and we're already surviving. And so to say, okay, I need to take off some time from work, I, you know, it could be trivial things or it could be really life-changing things where it's like I don't have the space to pay attention to how I'm suffering in silence, how there's something different about me and I'm ignoring it because I have to keep going. Like that's and that point, very And that point you made is I don't mean to cut you off, but that's my exact story. I was working. I was in a financial bind, and I didn't have – a faith that I have now that God will fix me and get me together. So I kept saying, I can't take off work. You know, school is almost out. I'll go get it checked out. As soon as school out, as soon as school out, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. As soon as school is out. And it was, it was almost too late for me. Um, that's, that's a familiar, that is a familiar um, situation that we've all been through. I also wanted to elaborate on just a just a couple of things that she said already. Uh, one, um, yeah, I, I I do understand about the putting the putting it off, putting it off. <laughs> I also wanted to add that um, just in case any men or any sisters are listening, men can get breast cancer as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, it, it's 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 I don't I'm not gonna say it's not as common, but it is men do have have breast cancer as well. Um, we learned that as I learned that prior to the day, but they mentioned it again today because uh, they wanted to make sure that the men knew to get checked as well or check themselves as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things. But um, when when she said that she had a lump and she noticed that it got hard, um, it was too hard. I had a lump that was there for years. I'm not gonna say. I checked it. I'm not going to say anything like that because I didn't. It was a lump. And my my philosophy, my mindset was, hey, it don't hurt. It's not bothering me. So I'm not going to I'm not going to bother it. It it was it was not hurting. It wasn't growing. It was if it would have grew, I, I would have got concerned. But it was like a mosquito bite or something and it was just a little hard thing in my hip, you know. And my doctor felt it, and she said, Sabrina, uh, Sabrina, that's not supposed to be like that. I said, well, it's been there for years. It's not bothering me. I'm not going to bother it, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, no, no, no. My doctor was not playing that. She set me up an appointment, and I had a biopsy. And um, right after that, I, uh, two days later, they said, you have cancer. And it was it could probably been caught a lot sooner if I would have took a second and had had that lump checked out, you know. Yeah, and I agree with her on that one because what my my what my experience was was yeah, you know, it wasn't hurting at first. But I see it and then the, the I mean the, the real telltale sign was the fact that the pain changed. When that pain came through I said, Oh yeah, it's time to pull it together. Pain will then you, like, God was like, okay, I see that you clearly ignoring this sign. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this pain down in you. And it was so unbearable that I had no choice but to go. If it wasn't for the pain, I probably still would have sat on it. But then I noticed a change in my entire breast. It shrunk two breast sizes because the cancer was taking over every single piece of tissue in that breast. It took over everything. By the time all four tumors had formed, I had no breast tissue left, none at all. And then it spread it right on out to my lymph nodes because after it ate up the tissue, the lymph nodes was the only other place for it to go. So God said, okay, this is what we're going to do here. If I put this little bit of pain in your life, because I have a very low pain tolerance, when he did that, that's what signaled me to then go in, and from there, that's when the series of events unraveled to 16 chemo treatments, 32 radiation, 
and a seven and a half. Well, between the two surgeries, I've had ten and a half hour surgery. Pain will make you go somewhere to get yourself together. Can you share with me, Kenosha, Sabrina, or any other ladies on the line, what happened when you found out you had cancer? What was that experience like? Well, for me, like I said, when I went in, your gut tells you something's not right. And when they did the ultrasound, they called the doctor in. I said, they found something. I said, well, maybe it's just that the raggedy scar tissue, and it's just probably getting out of hand. But scar tissue been in that breast for five, maybe 10 years, and it never was that hard. So I knew something wasn't right. And so they called the doctor in, and then as they got a little more into it, they called the radiologist in. When they got done scanning me and doing my uh, mammogram, they sat me in a room, and they didn't tell me immediately. They said, whatever it is, they knew it was cancer, but they need the radiologist to call it. They couldn't say it out of their mouth, so they didn't want to tell me right then and there. They said, the radiologist will call you, but them putting me in that room saying, we're going to take care of you. I went home with an uneasy feeling. I knew something wasn't right. And it was then at 4.45 the next day that the radiologist called me, and she didn't say too many words. She just said, this is the radio, the radiologist from XYZ Hospital, and I'm just calling to inform you that your test was positive for breast cancer. And I was they just did it over the phone? She did it over the phone at 4.45 in the afternoon. So I had... No, I had nobody to call. I, she asked me, did I have any questions? And I looked at her, and, I, and I'm not, I can't make this up. I looked at her, and I said, should I have any questions? Well, I, I was on the phone. But I said, should I have any questions? I said, right now I have a 1,000 questions, but I don't know which one to ask first. Mm, 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 mm. Now, and, now, I, had no, I, I had no, I had no feeling, y'all. I was numb. Um, and I know they have asked this question, that question already, but that's just the therapist in me. Sometimes I have to ask that same question again in, in another way. Just let's let's look, you know, let's look at that. And then, you know, some of the other things that that go on when you go to get treatment at a medical facility and how sometimes we can experience medical gaslighting where something is happening and going on with us and, you know, the doctor it totally ignores it and lets, tells you things like, oh, no, you know, that's okay, that's that's normal when you know your body, when you know mm-hmm. something isn't wrong. You know what I'm saying? That, my God, today. Mm-hmm. So, when, okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm just extra. I, I didn't notice. I know. I think I know my body pretty good. And it was just so. Mm, I was so unprepared when they said said it. And and to me, telling you on the phone was like the rudest thing ever. It was bad enough. My yeah. doctor, he didn't. When I went to the, um, get the results for the biopsy that I had, I was sitting on the little, you know, thing, the seat. And um, he just turned around, and I said, okay. He he said, I'm high, and didn't even introduce himself. Just said hi, and I knew his name because I I booked an appointment. Um, oh, yeah, you have cancer. Uh, are you kidding me? Are you are, are you just going to say it like that? And I I, I froze, and I, I, I froze. I let, I let a couple of tears come out, and then I said, and the first thing I said, like, I wasn't numb to asking questions. I was just numb to my body because I was thinking, like, just because you hear the word cancer, I hate when people say this, but it's not a death sentence. Well, you don't think that it's not a death sentence when you're 
sitting there and you know so many people that have died from this very disease or they've died for something simpler. And they immediately set up um they immediately set up um chemo. And and that took me like a week and a half to prepare. And then I had to tell my family and my friends because I have I don't know if anybody on here from my family or my friends, but you need them. You need them. Um, cause chemo makes you sicker. I mean, chemo makes you, I was feeling fine until they started curing me, you know, mm. but you need your family and your support system. And, and you, when, and when you can't move somebody there or even a phone call, my, my, my sorority were, um, called my, I had people calling me that I never would have thought called because I didn't even know you knew my number, but when they found out I was sick a lot, God blessed me with, with the phone calls, the support, because we need that. Especially if you yeah, don't have a and family. See, and see, and, 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 and what, what happened with me, even though they called me and they told me that I had breast cancer, um, she just was, you know, so nonchalant about it. And she just, you know, right. yeah, your test was positive for breast cancer. I said, okay. So now it's the weekend. So I don't have anybody to call. I don't have anybody to reach out to. I don't know who to talk to. I'm confused. And I have one friend that told me, whatever you do, whatever you do, Kenosha, do not go on the Internet looking for answers because you don't know what stage, you don't know what kind. And I did that, and that was the worst mistake of my life because I thought I was going to die by Monday morning. My doctor had already set up a meeting to meet with me on that Monday morning. Oh, we know that Tuesday morning we were having a meeting um, to discuss everything. She had already got the report back. She knew I had cancer. She knew everything. And so when they when we went in and sat down for the table talk to discuss my plan and stuff, she said, well, I don't have very much time to get you in chemo to save your life. She said, you don't have... She said, because it's aggressive, I have to treat it aggressively, meaning you need to be in chemo within the next 30 days. So I said, okay, I got to be in chemo in the next 30 days, whatever that means. So then she said, but they also saw cancer in your lymph node. So that was the second part of it. And so I had to have a biopsy done. And they wanted that biopsy. No, sure. Hello? I'm here. Hello? I'm here. Uh, they wanted that biopsy that Monday. So they said, you need to come in Monday and do your biopsy. So I said, okay, that's fine. I'll come in Monday. So they did the biopsy. It came back positive. And again, they called me again on the phone, y'all. Oh, mm-hmm. I you. And then she talked to me, y'all. I'm just calling to tell you that your biopsy was positive for cancer in your lymph node. Um, the report has been sent to your doctor. And um, for further any, anything else further you need, you need to call her. I said, oh, okay. All right. Because that was my next hurdle. My 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 doctor, my uh, whatever you want to call it, doctor. She she was like, well, our next hurdle is to see if that cancer spread into that lymph node, and if it did, it's going to make treatment just a little bit more difficult. And upon finding out that it did get in my lymph node, that made my situation go from bad to worse. So they were just like, we got to get you in chemo within the next 30 days. I had, and I cannot make this up, y'all. I had 21 appointments in 30 days. I had to have bone scans. I had to have, uh, I can't even tell y'all how many, uh, I can't even tell y'all how many, uh, what you call those things, mammograms and uh, EKG scans. I had, uh, I was on that table for two hours while they do my my uh, scan of my bones and they, they have to test my heart, see if my heart was ready for the type of chemo I had to take. I had 21 appointments 
to get ready for chemo, and then the day came, and it was showtime. And at first, yep. though, your body goes into something that you cannot explain. It's almost like a trend. Your body is like, what is this foreign mess you put in, in me? So immediately, chemo takes you somewhere else. But the preparation was very, very thrifty and thorough with my doctors because when they said it's curable, but it's going to take us some time and it's going to take some work and you're going to have to fight. And they told my family, y'all have to be there for her. She's going to need y'all. She's going to have some good days. Some days she's going to be there. Some days she's not going to, she's not going to be there. Some days she's going to be mad. She's going to have an attitude. Some days she's not. But at any rate, Y'all have to be her support. She's going to need everybody she can get. And as highly as it sounds, y'all, I wanted to be by myself. Yeah. I didn't want it's... to be around nobody. I'm just, I'm, and I'm just like that, but I'm stubborn. So I could do this. I don't need my, I don't need my sister. I don't need my friends. I don't need nobody. I got this, you know, and, and it didn't turn out that way. Everybody well, you was saying like, me. um, every, everybody you was were... saying the first thing that I, that you, you know, well, girl, you're going to lose your hair. Like, that's the worst thing. I thought that was going to be the worst part of it. Oh, my gosh. That was not the worst part of it. Um, uh, She's talking about breast cancer, and I'm talking about Hodgkin's lymphoma. But if you look at <clears throat> Hodgkin's lymphoma, you have the same symptoms as you do for menopause. If you're over, I don't know how old you'd be for menopause, but I I thought I was getting hot flashes so I, because that's one of the symptoms, you know. Um, well, swelling in your lymph nodes, fatigue, weight gain and weight loss, all that stuff, yep. they are the same, some of the same symptoms that you have for menopause. So I was, I was in my 50s, so I was like, um. Oh well, I'm just in menopause. I it wasn't that. So uh, uh, and a lot of people just let a lot of stuff pass. They have insurance, good insurance. Whereas I owe a million dollars, you know. So so you know, so go to the doctor. <laughs> That's one of the things that people just you know. Oh girl, I'm just in menopause. No, you need to go check. <laughs> Like me, I'm sorry. Chemo does that to you because I didn't have those yes. symptoms until I went through the chemo. When I started, and the chemo I took was called the Red Devil, Adriamycin. It's a chemo drug that, if you look it up right now on Google, it's going to tell you it's the most poisonous, most potent chemo drug on the market. It is the worst. It's called it's called Adriamycin. If you if you Google what's the worst chemo drug to take, it's gonna pop up. Adriamycin, the Red Devil. And so, it's, when you take that, it's gonna tell you that you can only take four because I'm on the phone. Um. It's going to tell you that you can only take four because your heart cannot withstand more than four doses. If you can withstand more than four doses, it, it, it runs a risk after that of putting you in heart failure. Okay. Um, how many tattoos? How many tattoos are living in the world? And so, black woman of God, what did it take? in your spirit to get through that part of your journey? When I tell you, if you don't know what faith is, you're going to find out very fast. Because if you don't get a, a bit of faith in your system, you got to finish. Because in that faith, you learn how to deal and cope with everything because it's a mental warfare. The devil gets in your head and tells you you're going to die. 
and you can't go off every report the doctors give because then they'll have you thinking, oh, it's a maybe 50 50. You got to grab God, you got to hold on to Him, and you got to keep Him. When I tell you I almost went mentally insane after that second chemo dose and my hair started to come out, I said, Lord, this, this, this can't be what you ordained for me. And so they said, okay, you got to take four doses of the Adrian Mice. So I take them, and they said, oh, it's working. It, 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 it's curing you. It's shrinking. It's doing what we needed to do. But then they hit me with, you got to take 12 more of this other drug. Huh? I thought you said, I'm like, Lord, what is this? I thought we only had these four, these eight, whatever. What, what, is, what is this? What do they mean, 12 more? I have to pray, y'all. I have to pray. I have to grab God and I have to hold on because when they said 12 more, that meant 12 more weeks of chemo. Once a week for 12 weeks. I went home, y'all. When I tell you, I shut up in that room and closed that door and I started to pray. And God said, well, go back and ask him, can you group them together? I went in. I said, listen. I'm not coming back here once a week for 12 weeks. I've had enough. After every dose of chemo, when I tell y'all I had neuropathy so bad in my feet and legs, my feet were numb. My feet were always numb after chemo. It would go away. Still have that. But it did. Oh, I, that's it that's did not go. I had, yeah, it, 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 it eventually, no, I still, that's one of my side effects from chemo. Um, Mine as well. Yep, I have it in my leg and I have it in my feet. It went away in my hands. It. it went away in my arm. But my legs and I my feet. I have it in my hands, and, hands and feet as well. It's, it's also a symptom for me as well. Hands and feet, and <clears throat> it, it. They don't tell you that it. They they don't tell you that it doesn't leave. I had a stroke. I had um. I have neuropathy in my hands and feet. And now I have vertigo as well. And one thing that they did not just touch on at all was, I don't know if you have this, could you, you could tell me if you do, but your teeth, your, your teeth become sensitive to cold and hot. Your yeah. mouth, uh, yeah. you get mouth sores and they don't tell you that yeah. the bone in your teeth decrease. They're going to, and it's a struggle to eat. It's, it's bad enough. We, we nauseous all the time. You're, you're Everything, I, I, it's nothing good about it. And if you know somebody that's going through chemo, or you're going, through, they're going through uh, cancer, or they're having radiation, just pray, pray for them. Because I, I prayed. My philosophy was through the whole cancer process. If I'm gonna pray, don't worry. If I'm gonna worry, don't pray. Because yeah, he, Allah got me. If God got me, he going to get me through this. And when I didn't know, like, how I was going to pay for my co-pays to get to the doctor because insurance sucked or whatever, God sent my family. They sent my friends. They would buy me lunch or they would, you need something for your co-pay? They would help me. I, I didn't know I didn't know where it was going to come from, but look at it. God, God made a way. So that's why I, I, I came on this show because it's about for sisters and People that need to know that they need to stand up and be together. And that's, that's, and that's where I'm at with it. I was referred by another good friend of mine who was there through the, and I, like I said, I Facebook most of some of my journey. Um, uh, a lot of my journey, like I said last year, I went raw and uncut with all the scars. The stuff people don't see that you go through from it. Um, I had a lot of what you went through. I had the sores in my mouth, and because I had to have that adriamycin injected, it was injected directly through my port, which means it went right to my heart. Because the port was yep. placed, the catheter for the port is placed down in your main artery in your heart. So every time they pump that in me, it went directly through my heart stream. So your heart would feel as if it's been a stop. So you, you mm -hmm. have to pray. You have to have God because you literally felt like your heart was going to stop beating at any second. Exactly. And so I had the mouth sore, but I did the peppermint. I did the, the chewy, the old peppermint that 
your mom used to give you back in church back in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. I had to take that. Somebody gave me that. And they said, yes, yeah, just do this be- before they put it in. Even when they would put the water in it, the saline to clean it out, you would taste that in your mouth. And uh, yeah. my teeth to this day are still very fragile, hot and cold. My skin is even like that. Like, Mine you don't is. go back to normal. There is... No normal. This is your new normal for a long time. This is your new normal, exactly. This is your new normal. You don't have the normal before chemo. Also, I'm sorry, I I, I don't want to interrupt. I'm going to be quiet. But I was told um, six months ago, seven months, six or seven months ago, that I was cancer free. Then I go in for my four month checkup. And they find um, my lymph nodes are some, they find some irregularities in my, my face. Now, you, people don't, just because um, they tell you you're cancer free, sometimes it's not over. And when they said it, I lost it because I can't go through chemo. I just kept saying, I can't do chemo again because it's hell. I can't do chemo again. And they found a way to get the cancer out of my neck, jaw, and throat without me having to do cancer. I mean, without me having to do chemo. I Thank you. But I just found out I've been cancer-free for the last three, I think, three weeks. <laughs> three, or four weeks. three or four weeks. So I'm cancer-free at this time, but I still have um, neuropathy. I still have heart issues, and I had a stroke, so... Now I'm being a neurologist, and I have to worry about dental stuff. So it's like, see, come on, get one something thing else. That, you can get through all this. You 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 got to hold on to this thought. Trouble don't last always. Um, Amen. I mean, the hum to yeah. be lost. Um, yes. The thing yes. about the neuropathy thing is it took me a year before I started to feel some relief. You're only three weeks out. You got a, some ways to go. It may not go away completely, but it's gonna go away enough for you to deal with. My neuropathy, the, the stage you're seeing now, is it, it literally during the day it bothers me a tad bit, but the moment I lay down and my body starts to shut down and rest for the night and wind down, my feet burn like hell, and I have to sit them literally, y'all, in front of a fan and cool them off. And all night is to cover on the feet, to cover off the feet. They get too cold, you got to put take, put the cover yep. on. They get too hot, you got to take the cover off them. But that's only in my feet and legs. My hands have subsided. I have my hands back. I mean, the only thing now is because, and I left this one point out, my cancer was aggressive enough that I, when I say that it went in my lymph nodes, it was in 14 of the 17 panels. I lost the entire panel because I had one lymph node that the chemo didn't show. Oh and this goodness. is why being self-aware is so important because had I just said, let me at least go to an appointment, it was I was working. I didn't want to be faced with that. And then I also said, well, I'm going to be off for two months for the summer. So whatever is going on, I, I don't want to be off work while it's going on. I need to pay these bills because I don't know if I'm going to get unemployment while I'm off because I drive school bus, so that's that's what I do. That's why I'm off of the stuff. And I'm like, and it's so, I, I don't it's, know. It's so sad that we, it's so sad that we as women or we as African-American women, we as women, period, we have to think about that. I went through chemo, and I did not miss work. I only miss work when they made me go to the hospital and stay, and and I went to work. I went to chemo like on a Thursday afternoon, I mean a Thursday morning, and then the next day I was at work. My coworkers were very supportive, but you should not have to be thinking about how how I'm going to pay the rent if I don't go, if I'm too sick. That's, one, our, that's something that we should, that should be, taken care of in the United States immediately, but we, we, we shouldn't be having to, I shouldn't have to worry about, dang, I got to go to work, but I, I, I can't stop hurling or I can't feel better. But that, I don't know what, you shouldn't, 
you're in, but I know for me being in Wisconsin, I'm down in Milwaukee. I my me social too. worker. I had we all. I had a yeah. I had a social worker down at Sinai because I took my treatments down at Sinai, and I had a social worker down there that I worked close with. She put me in touch with this, and I'm gonna give this to you the director of this podcast, I'm going to give these people to you um, so that you can, when you do do things throughout the rest of the month, these are some good women. So it's a group of women. They bought me, when I tell y'all, they bought me gas cards. I didn't get, I didn't need gas for two months. Um, they gave me Target gift cards. They gave me pick and save gift cards. They gave me almost $1,000 in gift cards. And a lot of resources. I had a lot of places where I applied and they paid my rent. I had a lot of places that I applied and they paid my car payment too. And so I was blessed Can I ask and I was on lucky. Yes, go ahead. People, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's, I don't even, um, Luanda, I don't, how do you know if people on here? Because I'm just talking away. I'm sorry. I just, I'm I want to just say people, breathe, people just, breathe. Just, but the thing is, the because, lines are open, and I I let the lines be open since the beginning of the show. Everybody, this is this is our space, ladies. Everybody can chime in, say hello, hi, ladies. I want to hear your voices. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I want to hear your people voices. People look at this is your space. Miss Chambers is not here to depower you. I'm I'm here learning and listening, and you know I got some takeaways for for everyone at the end of the show as I'm listening to the conversation. So I want all everybody. This is this is your space. I know a I couple tell- of my friends are, and probably children are on here, but I just want to say, act. Uh, I forgot the other lady's name. Miss Kenosha, who you been talking to? Miss Kenosha. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. Um, <laughs> People look at you when you just when you go to work or when you're at home and you look normal. So when you look normal, do they think nothing's wrong anymore, or do they think you okay, or or do you just or do they just like always treat you like a invalid? No, um, that's like the said, question. I, I, would, I, I used to drive myself to chemo. I used to drive myself to chemo, and I would have chemo and I would stay home from work. I would do my morning route, my bus route. And then I would drive myself to chemo, and then I would stay off the rest of the day because, you know, I was a little tired. You I wasn't think in, after that. In a, yeah, I was a little weak. Like, I, I didn't lose very much weight during chemo. I think I lost four pounds through the whole chemo session. Um, I started I lost chemo that. in June, and I finished all 16 treatments by October 23rd. So for me, when I went to work, I didn't want to wear wig. I said, you take it as it comes. I'm going to wear my bald head. I tried wigs. I didn't like them. I didn't like the way they fit. I didn't like the way they look. I I was not the wig person. Like, I I didn't want to do the wig thing. In that area, I was blessed because, well, I was was not blessed. I'm Muslim. So I, my head is covered anyway. The only person who really saw my head was my kids and my husband. And he kept saying, you look good like that. Put some earrings on. You look good like that. But in my mind, I'm like, this ain't me. But I could deal with I could deal with the hair. I couldn't deal with the neuropathy. I could deal with the hair. I couldn't deal with I still can't type good because my hands are still tingling and, and stuff like that. And so you probably won't the, ever get to be able um, to do that part again. I use a lot of devices to help with my grip yeah. in my right hand because I'm by proxy a right-handed woman and my cancer was in my right breast. So now I have yeah. lymphedema in my right arm because I lost all those lymph nodes that normally move that fluid out. So I'm in therapy. I wear sleeves because it's, it, it, it's, it's not very noticeable, but for people that know me, they know that one of my arms is bigger than us. If you look really close, you can see it. But you won't know what it's attained to until I tell you. Because the way I carry myself and the way I look, I don't look like what I've been through. Come on now. Right. Hey. Hello, lady. Hey. Yes. Come on. Hey. And that's the thing about it. 
I, like I Somebody said, I, when I had surgery, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all this story. If this don't Somebody inspire, was talking. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> if, if, I'm going to tell you this story, and I hope it inspires somebody. When I was going through cancer, I went to church. I had surgery on a Thursday. I kid y'all not. I was in church on Sunday. My pastor said, what are you doing here? I said, Pastor, I could not not be here. God saved my life. I owe him this visit. I had two drains in. Because on the right breast, I ended up with two drains. I ended up with one on the left after that. But I had the two on the right. And I went to church. I had a pump on. I had two drains in. And I still went to church. And I got so wrapped up in that service, I started shouting. And I dropped my vacuum, my, my, my pump. I dropped it. It fell off of me and it hit the floor. And all I could hear people saying is, get her, get her, get her, make her sit down, make her sit down. And I couldn't because I was so happy that I made it through that surgery. I mean, I was in a surgery seven and a half hours straight, and I made it out of there. No complications during surgery, none of that. So for me, it was like, not go to church. Who y'all talking to? And that's why I say it's, it's very important that I'm not saying everybody believes in God, and I'm not saying that everybody holds the same religion that I hold, but whoever you call your higher power, whoever is your God, you need to grab him and hold on to him because if it ever comes a time where you need him, it's it's going to be it's going to be critical because if you don't Amen. Need to hold, I mean, hold on to it, you will not make it out of chemo. You will not. The devil will take you down. Yeah. My God, to, and that's to know. No, somebody, go ahead. I'm no. sorry. Somebody was talking. I didn't want to interrupt, but I don't know who that was if they wanted to say what they wanted to say before I start. Hello, <laughs> hello, hello, ladies. Hello, this is Twana. Um, great conversation. Hi, Miss Chambers. Um, hey. Great, great conversation. Hey. Um, everything that you guys are speaking on is so true. And I, I'm so glad to be a part of this platform because I know Kenosha well, very good friend of mine. She has been through a lot. And if you look at her, you just wouldn't even know if you didn't know. And she's a very strong woman. And I felt like um, her testimony could be somewhat of an impact for someone that's out here going through similar things. Now, let me shift to the South a little bit because, you know, the medical field, uh, the medical field there um, is totally different in the services, the level of services that you um, receive. I have a cousin. Um, she has lymph node cancer, and they had pretty much gave up on her, told her she wasn't going to live um, past six months. Mm -hmm. But my God, today, she's still been with us for two years. And her her cancer is where her white blood cells are, are eating up the red blood cells or whatever, but it's in her throat. And um, so she was forced to leave her job because they didn't want to pay for insurance for her. She was also um, one that didn't have any income, so she didn't know how she was going to pay her bills. And mind you, um, the state of Mississippi, um, you know, economically or financially is not doing well. So she called me, and she was like, cousin, they want me to have all these tests, but I don't have insurance. I told her, I said, let me, I went on the computer while she was talking to me. Because a lot of places don't tell you this. And just so you guys know, too, on this platform, that the hospitals here in the state of Wisconsin have something called community care. So what it does yeah. is if you, for some reason, lose your job and don't have any insurance, they will pay any doctor's visit, any hospital visit at 100% for you, just so you know. Come yeah. on. So I, 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 my info, come on. Yeah, and so I get online and I searched, I said, aha, there it is. She was like, what, cousin? I said, your your office do have a community care. I said, here's the number. I need you to call them tomorrow, 
and I need you to have them to send out your application or go pick one up. And I told her, I said, now, there's probably two things they're going to ask you for. Uh, one will be your bank statement, and the other one will be your tax form. If you have neither, then it does not apply to you. You just basically show up with your ID, fill out the form, and they'll let you know that you're approved. So um, she she now uh, can see a doctor within um, the hospital or wherever they send her to. Any type of test they have to run on her, she gets that. They pay for her medication. So it's all who you know. You get what I'm saying? Because a lot of people don't tell you yeah. that, right? The state of West Country, right. they don't tell you because we had, yeah, so I had a friend a of, at, at my coworker as a matter, a coworker as a matter of fact, she might be on here. She had a friend that was going through um, cancer and had no insurance, no income, and nobody. I didn't know what to tell her. Nowhere Listen, to tell her to go because, honey, let me tell you, uh, Columbia St. Mary has it, St. Luke's has it, St. Joe's have it, uh, Freighter has it. Uh, all of this it. is called community care. They have a community. They have it's in the finance department. It's called community care. So what it does, what it is, is a bunch of people donate all this money to the hospital for people that can't afford their ins- uh, can't afford insurance or if they don't have insurance. So you fill out the form. The only two requirements they want is a bank statement or 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 your um, tax form. If you have neither, then it does not apply to you. Will they volunteer and give you this information? No, they will not. No. So I'll put right. it out here for you. Mm-hmm. And Black Sister Talk will post this up on the social media networks so you guys can on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook so you guys can get all of this information and takeaways and all of that from today. Um, come through, Ms. Lane, with the resources. Come through. Come on. Come on. Yeah, and that's why I said I have one, the one that I use where all of the ladies got together with those gift cards. They, that one social worker got me together. When I say together, I had, like I said, I had help with rent. I had help with whatever bills that needed to be paid. Now, they won't give you the check, but they'll send it directly where it needs to go. They send one directly to my car note people and they paid my car note for two months, and then they sent one to my landlord and paid my rent for two months. And so I had a different one. I have all these resources at home, and I'm going to make sure that she gets them so she can post them. But, they, like I said, they gave me gift cards for food at Pick and Save. I had um, gas cards. Um, they even invited me this past week to go to a thing out in West Bend, it was like a breast cancer's retreat, but because uh-huh. I had all the funerals going on, I wasn't able to attend. So it was like a breast cancer's retreat where it cost $25, but you go and just relax all day. They did it last year. They did it I this year, so I'm sure they're going to do it again next year. But I do have I a lot of the resources the that I have. Worker. Um, the, the, it's a cancer social worker because I went to Sinai. And I was on the cancer floor, and so my uh, what do you call that doctor? The cancer doctor. See, that's the one. The other Oncology. thing about chemo. Oncologist. Huh? Oncologist. Yeah, my, my oncologist. My oncologist and my my uh, surgeon. When they got me in that room, they connected me with cancer care uh, social workers. They only dealt with cancer patients. So when they connected mm-hmm. me with them, they got me in tune with so much stuff. I had her name is Carol. She was my my cancer court cancer care coordinator. Her name is Carol. Yeah. I'm gonna find her last I name and her card number. Uh, but I did she not, I, was amazing. I'm so glad it was. I'm so glad to hear that you got assistance. I. All I kept hearing was, I make too much. The only thing that they did for me was I told them, look, I'm broke. I can't come to no appointments this week till I get paid. They said, oh, no, we're going to waive your uh, co-pay for this month. Okay, that was it. My sister, my brothers, my relatives, my friends, 
uh, they they would call me and say like, hey, you need something or whatever. They would my sister paid for my 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 appointment or my other sister paid for it. And it and then I'm not good. I don't know. Uh, Kenosha, you might be better. I'm not good at asking for help. I'm not going to do it. Y'all know I'm sick. Just come over and help me. Like, come over here and love me. And then I cuss you out and be, get out, you know. But I'm not good at asking people for help. And my family is like, well, she must be good. She ain't saying nothing. But you you, you have to, people that's listening, if you get sick or anything ever like this happen, you got to open up and ask people for help. And yeah, I did it sometimes. I, like, I did like, when I, I couldn't walk. Well, I I did. I, I I just needed help with a few bills because I was off for the summer. So I think too that's probably the difference between you and I. I I didn't I qualify for a lot of stuff because I was technically off work for the summer and I wasn't receiving my unemployment yet. So they yeah. knew I was incomeless. So they were like, you know, you know, we got this, we got that, we got this. And, you know, you didn't even need to make a whole lot of money. As long as you were, you had a positive breast cancer result and you were going to start chemo or you needed more treatment, you qualified. It wasn't, some of that stuff wasn't even income-based. It was yeah. as long as you were positive for cancer and you needed treatment, you qualified I automatically. I make too much, so I understand. I didn't have a pride in not asking nobody for nothing. I My biggest thing with the cancel is I didn't want nobody to feel sorry for me. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't care if I had to ask somebody for something, I could do that. But I didn't want nobody crying, and I didn't want nobody to feel sorry. Those are the, the things I didn't want. And for me, like I said, I knew God was going to take care of me. So I would tell everybody, go on. If you want to make me, if you want to help me, laugh around me. If you want to help me, even if I'm down, just be up. I feel your energy. And that's mm -hmm. what did it for me. You know, if you really want to help me, if you see me down, pick me up. Because it was the laughter for me. I watched movies that made me laugh. Like, I, you couldn't catch me really doing too much. That would isolate me and, and force me to think about what I was going through. My hardest time through the whole battle was at night when I was alone. That's when you really, literally have to call on God the most at night when you're by yourself and you don't have nobody to make you laugh. You don't have nobody there to say nothing to you. you it's you and God at that moment. And that's all you have because the devil is going to taunt you every okay. single day. He's going to tell you you're not going to make it. He's going to tell you you're going to die. He's going to tell you. He's going to tell you, you you're not going to make it. Even though the doctors already said it's curable, even though you, you know, you get good report, but you feel like crap. So it's those days when you feel like, am I really going to die? Because you feel like you are about to give out at any moment. You feel like that. Like at any moment, you're going down. That's what you feel like. And if you don't keep yourself positive, and like I was saying to um, the the lady for the podcast, me, I had a saying. I told God, I said, if this is the race that you want me to run, I'll run it. But I need you to help me run it with grace. I don't need nobody to see nothing negative on my face. Nothing negative within me. I I don't want nobody to see none of that. I want everybody to see me run this every day that I open my eyes with a smile on my face. And that's what I did, y'all. And when I went to work, I had a smile on my face. I didn't go to work sad or ever. You okay? You need anything? You need your bus pulled up? No, I'm going to walk to my bus. I functioned on a normal level. And I stayed positive. And so because I did all of that, that's what helped me get through. That's what helped me get through. That's, that's what helped me get through. I'm actually 
I had to come outside because, like I told her, today is my mom's 10th year anniversary of her death. My mom died from cancer. And we were set to do a balloon release for her. And um, everybody's meeting now because I just got wind of the podcast this morning. And I had already had this plan, but I did want to sit in and I wanted to talk to the ladies and help somebody in any way that I can with my journey. I have a question. Do you have daughters or or do they have to go to the doctors like because it runs in the family or no? That I have four daughters and because my cancer was strictly through my hormones. They don't have to be tested. It wasn't. It wasn't a hereditary cancer. It was okay. all my hormones. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was. It, it was. It was my my own hormones attacked my body, and it set up cancer in that breast where they had already had, lip, you know, that uh, scar tissue at, mm-hmm. and then that's how I got it. And then not being aware not paying attention to me, it spread it, and it got worse. Well, right. like, like mm-hmm. yours to know, sir, mine is this opposite because my, uh, my dad's side of the family, all the females have to be tested every three years. Um, my grandmother, um, she died of ovarian cancer. I had an aunt that died with ovarian cancer, and then I had another aunt that died with um uh, brain cancer, and then um, they saved one of my aunts. She had colon cancer, so they got to her in time. So as a result of that, because it's all hereditary, I am one, even though I don't have cancer, uh, but I Thank because goodness. hereditary on my dad's side of the family, every three years I have to be tested. And see, and I lost my mom to esophageal cancer. I lost my dad to head and neck cancer. My mom has a sister who's in remission for breast cancer. She has another sister who's in remission for, uh, uh, what is that? Not ovarian cancer, but the other one. And uh, because of that, they thought mine was hereditary. So they were concerned about my daughters, but when all of my genetic testing came back, they tested 32, well, of 32 of the 34 genes that would carry the cancer trait, and they didn't find it in me nowhere. So therefore, they were like, well, since we don't find the trait in you, and your mom didn't pass from breast cancer and your aunt survived it, my daughters are pretty much sick. But they did advise them around 30 to start, you know, just start doing exams and being more aware. And the mere fact, like I said, that mine, um, the mere fact that mine was set up for my hormones, that that kind of made things a little different, you know, made the things a little different for them. Yeah, my dad and and. And kid, I mean, a lot of kids. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm saying kids like they're little kids. I mean, a lot of adults, a lot of families, or pa- people don't really realize their parents' health history. I didn't know <clears throat> a couple of things about my dad, my father, because he really, really wasn't in my life like my parents, my mother. And find out my dad had cancer. My mother had two types of cancer and two different organs. And then their test. They did test her for the same cancer that I have. Luckily, she did not have it. And then, um, but my dad had prostate cancer and 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 severe blood pressure issues, and and that's probably where I got the blood pressure messed up from too. But you also need to do your homework for your own self. Know your body. Well, let me you, let me just say my little tip. Know your body. Number one. Talk to your parents or talk to your family members, or if you don't have parents, talk to your family. If somebody's going to know, like, hey, your mom, your grandma died of cancer or whatever, and you need you, you do need to know those things. Um, 
And if you feel a lump on your breast, don't wait. If you feel a lump anywhere on your body that wasn't there before, don't wait. Go to the doctor. I, the the It's not bothering me. I ain't going to bother. It philosophy, that don't work. It, it really don't. Because, huh? I said, put that to the side. Exactly. It, it, don't fix it. Right. Let's show our no, it, it, gratitude. It, it, I agreeing with you, Sabrina. Mm-hmm. And you she have said to, you have to. You have to. You have to be. I mean, well, let me put it like this. Do you want to be uncomfortable at the doctor's office or at chemo office? So you have to do, do some uncomfortable things and ask okay. questions. And if you think, if you're at home and you be like, um, I need to ask my, I got a doctor's appointment, I need to ask this. Take a little piece of paper. Write down your questions while you're thinking of them. Take them to the doctor with you. So when you at the doctor, you'll not remember. <laughs> that was one another thing because they they always say, "Do you have any questions?" You say, "No." You, when you get home, you think of everything you want to say. Like, why mm-hmm. do I gotta take this? Is it, is it gonna take my appetite away? Am I gonna be able to have a bowel movement? Why y'all giving me this? Why why is my pee turning red because of this chemo? You know, chemo is poison. Come on, talk about it. And that is so true. No, no, no. There's no need to apologize in this and the word, no. And the word because. cancer do not mean you're going to die. The word cancer is not a death sentence. You can beat it. Because yeah. I had stage four Hodgkin's lymphoma, and I beat it twice. Thank you, God. I believe beat it twice. Three weeks ago, they said, oh, <laughs> mm, they said your cancer gone. No. Mm-hmm. That's a blessing. But you said, but you said I didn't think that I was going to be telling my sisters and my my kids, like, hey, it's gone, so I'm all right. I'm still sick, but it ain't cancer. Mm. Right. And, and that's one important. thing I need to... Uh, and one thing that say? also I need to su- suggest to people in case you know somebody they if if they crying all the time and they depressed because of this, they need to talk to somebody or journal it or write it down or something because I I could drink something and it is tasting like the 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 saline water and it make me cry. I still gag if I drink some Gatorade that's hot. It is it, because it, that's one of the things that made me sick. I so mm-hmm. maybe it's mental. Maybe it's mental, but crying and being sad about I'm happy. I'm happy. And even when I'm sad, I try to be happy because you don't want people to worry. I don't want my sisters and my brothers and, well, my sisters and my kids to worry. Like, my mama just crying or my mama's so sad. No, nope, they don't see me sad. When I'm sad, I'm here by myself. I try to be, hey, let's go shopping or let's do something. Even if it hurt me, I'll be going. I went to that sister's <laughs> truck with neuropathy and my feet swollen. I squalled in them shoes, but I had to go because I said right. I would. That's right. That's right, sister. <laughs> but you know, so, sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. She said, no, you, but no, you sorry. You, you brought out a good, um, a good thing that people to make them aware because I lost the aunt, um, about a couple of years ago, she had been having this pain in her stomach for the longest, never going to get it checked out. And by the time they, she did go get it checked out because she was in so much pain, um, it ended up being a stage four tumor in her stomach. And she passed shortly after that. I think she just basically gave up because she didn't want the, the chemo. Um, but that's just like breast cancer. Um, you know, our, our black women, we need to get checked out annually, you know, um, to get those things done. No matter if you don't have a lump or anything, yeah. you get it checked anyway. Um, you know, but that's so- why I said the self-awareness um, during the breast exam, they help. They mm-hmm. help because if I, and then what's crazy about me is I did the exam. I felt the lump. I knew the lumps was there. So the thing about it was, was at that moment, that wasn't my priority, and it should have been. Had I went mm-hmm. in when I first felt the lump, I wouldn't have made it to stage two. 
I had it that long that it made it to stage two. And they said, had I went 30 more days before I started chemo, I would have been at stage three. I was at a stage three. Bye. It sounds like you're tired of not being heard. If so, follow Black Sister Talk on Instagram and send us a DM with your thoughts. Or become a patron by going over to Patreon and adding Black Sister Talk. For my people that don't do social media, reach out to us at our email. Talk at gmail.com or join us on Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m. Central Time by dialing 516-418-5674. We would love to hear from you. Remember, we do this for you so you can breathe. Breaking the stigma one conversation at a time.